Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're not actually gonna do any examples uh, of using our method of trig substitution. Instead, I wanna talk about some of the other forms that trig substitution can take on. Right, we've already seen one in our first few examples of what we call a sign substitution. And what we saw for our sign substitutions was if we had a quantity like a squared minus x squared or the square root of a squared minus x squared or really some power of a squared minus x squared showing up in our integral, and none of our other integration techniques are really being effective, then we might try one of our trig substitutions. And if this expression is showing up, we're gonna try a sine substitution. We'll set every x equal to a times sine of theta, and that will cause the differential of x to be equal to a times cosine of theta. And the way we discovered or stumbled upon this trig substitution, this approach was by working with this trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one, we manipulated this Pythagorean identity so that our expression kind of showed up and informed us how to make these substitutions. Well, there's other types of trigonometric substitutions that exist out there, and the way that they are derived or can be discovered or stumbled upon is by going through the same process just with our other Pythagorean identities for our trig functions. So sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one is the most popular version of our Pythagorean identities for our trig functions. But if we divide both sides of this Pythagorean identity by cosine squared, we get another really important Pythagorean identity that says tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. Our other trigonometric substitution techniques come from, instead of thinking about our integrand looking like some manipulated version of this Pythagorean identity, we think of our integrand as being some manipulated version of the second Pythagorean identity. So in general, when we're working with these uh, Pythagorean identities, we're working with uh, multiples of these Pythagorean identities. Usually we're multiplying them by something like a squared. And so the idea is, well, if we have tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta, we could multiply both sides of that equation by a squared, then our identity would look like this. And then, well, we could take the square root of each side and we get something like the square root of a squared plus tangent squared of theta plus a squared is equal to the square root of a squared times secant squared of theta. But if you take the square root of something that is entirely squared, it just cancels that square root out. So we could also write our second Pythagorean identity as something like this. And well, now the idea is if inside of our integral, we have an expression like this showing up, we might try to make a tangent substitution. So what's the difference between this expression and maybe that first expression we saw for our sine substitution? Well, we have our constant squared in each of them. In our sine substitution, what we are doing with that constant squared is subtracting some variable quantity squared from it. Well, in this case, we're not subtracting anything away from our constant squared. We're adding some variable quantity squared to our constant squared. So when will we want to use one of these tangent substitutions? Well, when we encounter a uh, expression like this one. And so if the function we're trying to integrate has something like the square root of a squared plus x squared show up and none of our other integration techniques are working, then we might try to make one of these tangent substitutions. So we're gonna set x equal to a times tangent of theta. That initial substitution will then make our square root quantity turn into a squared times tangent squared of theta plus a squared but we know that that's gonna be equivalent to just a times secant of theta. This trig substitution allows us to rewrite our square root quantity without the square root. That's kind of the, the overall goal with all of these substitutions. But just like before, we have to be careful. If x is equal to a times tangent of theta, we have to also know how to express the differential of x in terms of our new variable theta. And that's just done by differentiating this equation. a is a constant, so it's really what is the derivative of tangent of theta and that's secant squared of theta d theta. And there is just one more case for trig substitution that we're gonna run into and have to know how to deal with. And it still comes from this second Pythagorean identity. We actually never use that third version of the Pythagorean identity. And so basically in this second version, we just left it as it was, but we could have also moved things around and solved for tangent squared. So if we do that with this trig identity, we get tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta minus one. 
Well, then we could do like what we did uh, earlier. What's like a more manipulated or general version of this identity going to look like? Well, we could multiply both sides by some constant squared, like a squared. Then that'll make our identity become a squared times tangent squared is equal to a squared times secant squared minus a squared. And then just like before, what are we going to do? We're going to take the square root of each side of this equation but taking the square root of how I've written it here, the left-hand side, that just cancels those powers of two. And so the idea is we think of this as being the quantity maybe inside of our integral or integrand. If we can make a secant substitution, then all of our manipulations and these identities will allow this quantity to be simplified and rewritten without the square root as just a times tangent of theta. So that is our third and final case for trigonometric substitution. If we encounter an expression like this, which in general we're thinking of that a squared times secant squared of theta as our x squared rule, then that'll look like x squared minus a squared underneath our square root. If that shows up inside of our integral, then what we're going to try to do, we'll try setting x equal to a, which is just a constant factor, times secant of theta, then that'll cause our differential of x to be equal to a times secant of theta times tangent of theta d theta. So to summarize, when do we want to use the method of trigonometric substitution? The first thing we want to do is try our other methods first, like a substitution method. That's always our go-to thing to try first. If the other methods don't seem to be effective and we're encountering some type of root quantity, then we might try a trig substitution. So what type of trig substitution we make depends on that root quantity involved. If it's some constant squared minus a variable squared, then we're going to want to try a sine substitution. If we have addition of our constant squared and our variable squared, we're going to want to try a tangent substitution. And this third case is just like the mirror of our first case. Instead of having a constant minus a variable, we have our variable minus a constant squared. Well, that's when we're going to want to try one of these secant substitutions. So in an earlier video, I mentioned how with this first set of substitutions for the sine substitutions, technically we could have done a cosine substitution instead, but we have to work with a negative sine. But that is why we choose to make a sine substitution over a cosine substitution so we avoid any type of sine errors that are likely to happen. And the same sort of thing is happening with these last two substitutions. Both of those came from this Pythagorean identity, but we have a third Pythagorean identity, right? The one that says cotangent squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. Well, that would allow us to make like cotangent and cosecant substitutions, but those are really equivalent to our tangent and secant substitutions. Just when we take the differentials and swap those out, again, we get some pesky negative signs that we would rather not work with.